Hi, it's Sneaky Looks Better tonight. Now, last night we showed you how to use XVID Cap to use screen capturing basically. Now, while I was doing that, I actually used a different program to record me doing a screen capture, which was GTK Record My Desktop. So I was doing two captures at the same time, and the CPU lived to fight another day, so they say. Now, when you use uh, Record My Desktop, it yeah, puts in the OG video file format, which pumps out enormous, enormous files, and we really need to get them files small enough to upload to somewhere. So you can use a program called DVD, it's in the repos, to convert it to MPEG-4. So all we do, we go down here, look, you can create videos as well, and whatever. You click on the MPEG-4, I'll move the box up for you. Right, and now what we really need to do is to add a file. So click Add, move them along, let's go and find our file, shall we? Now that'd be in my main files. Oh, here we go. Go down out one. Okay, that's the file. See, it's 15.9 megabytes. That's quite large for a, such a small video, really. Now, what we want to do? We want to change some stuff here. It tells the original file size, the file, what's the size it wants to go down to, frame rates a second, etc., etc. So that all looks all right. It's in PowerC cams. So that's good for me. We'll go down to advanced options. Firstly, I'm going to take the all day rate down to 128, fault of habit, I know, but hey, never mind. And then we're going to pump the video rate up to as high as it goes, so that's 6000 on this. Video format, now you get a lot you can do, 4x3 or 16x9. So it's all them sizes you can do, but I'm going to go for 1280x720, because that's pretty square really, isn't it? Video options, we won't really play with that. Now quality, on the other hand, I'm going to use a low pass 5 deinterlacing filter. My personal preference, if when you do get to using it, you may want to use a different one. So, you know, add a little play and see what happens. We click OK. That looks all right. Tells us what the output's going to be. You can do a preview if you want. It's up to you entirely. So, there we go. That looks all hunky-dory. We'll go forward. Now, I'm going to put it in my videos file. There we go. We'll keep it as movie for the time being, as I'm just demonstrating to you, really. Yeah, yeah, I just agree. And forward and off it goes. Now this can take quite a while, all depending on how big the file is. So I cheated and I edited this bit out because we've been sitting there for another five minutes otherwise. So I'll let it go in a little bit. There we go. I've cut it there. Lovely, lovely, super. Almost finished converting. I think in the end, using this, took about four minutes. Bearing in mind I'm capturing it at the same time, so if you're only using that one program, it would be less. Click OK. That's all runky dory to me. We'll quit the program, just say yes, be fine. We'll go down to where I put it, which is in my videos. There we go, we'll click there. Let's find the movie section. There we are, movie. And there's a file now in AVI or in Big 4, which gives you uh, stuff you can do to edit, really. Because I've not actually found anything useful that actually edits of video files personally, but someone will may let me know in the future. So, what do we do? Well, you want to edit it, don't you? So you can use, yeah, have a debug, would be fine. Just open it up a bit, here we go. Open, find me files, in videos, under movie. Click movie, that's our file. Open it up, and you can edit to your heart's content there, put audio on, music, in, intros, whatever you want to do, or whatever different form, format you want to output it to. So that's all really good. Simple, simple, simple. Sneaky Linux out.